<laughs> Are we ready? You wanted a joke. Good. Okay, good. All right. So um, thank you all for coming. This is awesome. It is a real honor. Every B-Sides I get to be involved with and a first B-Sides. This is amazing, uh, especially seeing so many new people. It's I've got the feels in a major way. This is phenomenal. Um, so they always give me a really tough act to follow. Uh, Jack was really dead on in a lot of what he said about speaking at B-Sides. And uh, I am going to run counter to all of it. Um, he was like, you know, break up your content, have lots of, you know, put one idea per slide. I'm definitely not doing that. And, uh, you know, be chill and calm. You know, I'm extremely nervous. I have none of Jack's gravitas. And, uh, you know, uh, be funny. Probably all of my jokes will fall flat, as, as you may have noticed. But uh, what I'm going to be addressing today is something that I get asked a lot. And it's usually in the context of, I'm a dev, you know, I'm writing, God help you, uh, PHP, and I want to know about security. Again, God help you if you're writing PHP. Or, I'm a sysadmin, or I'm a network monkey, and security is a big world. Security is not just, ew, the firewall. Security is more than IT, so that's why I say, from IT or other totally different fields, yes, obviously, it's very technical and you need to know your stuff technically, but it's much more than that. It is actually an holistic other practice from IT. So when I refer to them separately, it's with a caveat. Yes, all of this is technical, but it's also social, psychological, organizational, a bunch of other things competencies that you need to develop in order to get in. So I'm going to be talking about both the technical and the non-technical as strategies, as skills you can develop in order to get into security, in order to build for yourself a security career. Because sometimes in technical fields and non-technical fields, not sometimes, really always, we get fed this lie that there's a silver bullet if you go to college, you'll get a good job. If you get a degree, job's waiting for you. That's a joke, if there ever was one. We all know that. In a post-2008 economy, we've all found that. Same thing with security. Oh, if you get a CISSP, job's waiting for you. Well, yeah, there might be. Might not be the job you want, though. Might be kind of a crappy job. So I'm going to address some of those silver bullets and talk about ways that you can develop a real security skill set and get a really good security job. So cool. How about a new slide? Here? So there are best practices for getting into InfoSec. By the way, I have to give a lot of credit to Johnny Christmas with whom I originally developed this talk. So if there's any innuendo or risque humor in these slides, that's all him. I would never dream of of putting anything child inappropriate in there. So the big three Self-education. Again, I was just talking with my esteemed colleague, Beltface, about this. He's saying, you know, I, I'm in an IA program, and there's people who don't know what subnetting is. And it's just like, blows your mind. So, yeah, you can get a degree, and it may be helpful. A CS degree, awesome. IA degree, great. Icing on the cake. But the best education you're going to get in security topics, you're doing on your own. Probably at home, in a lab, or at an event like this. I'm going to talk more about that. Do it with other people networking. Talk to people. One of the biggest sources of information and education you're ever going to get is right here in this room. Look around you. Look to your left. Look to your right. Everybody here can teach you something. And I'll talk about strategies for extracting that information from other people, using people in a nice way for fun and profit. And when you're developing your skills, refining what you're really interested in within that wide world of security, you need to do research and you need to understand, okay, what are people looking for? What types of positions are really hot right now? What skill sets are they looking for? Are there languages I need to learn? Are there environments I need to become comfortable in? And there's ways to extract that information too. So let's talk about these. First of all, self-education. 
So, uh, self-education is a massive topic uh, that merits its own talk, and it'll be the bulk of this talk. The optimal information security professional, the ideal information security professional, is well-rounded. Yes, you'll find some positions, some people with just one capability. They do one thing all day. But in security, that's extremely rare. In security, you may find yourself doing server config one minute, you know, writing out a network diagram the next minute, and then having to go in front of C-level and get buy-in right after that. Jack kind of touched on that. But again, it's social and psychological education. So if you find that your skill set is nebulous, you know, maybe you're mid-career and you're like, eh, I've done a lot of a lot, there are methods you can use uh, to self-educate that I will get into in a moment. But the case study I like to use uh, is of an individual who <laughs> was a sea captain <laughs> uh, and wanted to go into IR. And this guy was in his mid-40s. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. He was in his mid-40s, and he was a sea captain. He was like, I'm sick of being a sea captain. And he used the tools I'm about to talk about in order to within the space of about six months of realizing that he didn't want to be a sea captain anymore. Now he's a DFIR guy. And that's my inspiring story. You can, you can get off the ocean and into a lab. Here's how. Structured learning. So uh, anybody in here take George's class? Yay. Good. Good. So again, the learning that you're going to need to do, you're not going to get it in a college IA or CS program. You'll get some that's useful. I'm by no means knocking it, certainly not at a university. It's valuable. But a lot of the heavy lifting, you're going to get on your own. So, for instance, George's class, can't recommend highly enough. Phenomenal class. Even if you're just, you know, if whether you're in IT or not, take these classes. Because... Regardless of whether you go anywhere with them, they will give you an understanding of threats, methods used. They will give you an understanding of the greater security posture of where we're at today. Uh, Joe McRae and Marcus Carey have good ones. This is the tip of the iceberg of the education that's out there. We're all capable of Googling, yeah? So these are my favorites. There's other great ones out there. Again, tip of the iceberg. A what's out there in a non-university, non-traditional environment. Intentionally vulnerable sites. Uh, again, a caveat. Do this in a lab environment. Don't do this at work, probably. <laughs> Unless work is, you know, asks you to do that or your lab is at work. Good for you, but you probably already have a security job then. Uh, hack this site is a good one. That's Jeremy Hammond's. He's had some legal troubles recently. Um, it's still a good site. Bone Hub is run by an absolutely terrifying hacker friend of mine, and it's another very good one. You can walk into these. You know, I'm okay technical as a user, but I am by no means a technical practitioner. You can walk into these with practically zero technical knowledge, and it will walk you through it as though you're five. Again, try to do it in a lab environment. You know, it's not like a SWAT team's going to come in and take you away if you don't do it in a lab, but it's ideal. Um, and we'll walk you through step by step. Here is a vulnerability. Here is an example of you know each of the OWASP top 10. Can you see the hole in this? OK, how do we exploit Mr. Hole? It's very... <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Again, uh, it tells it to you like you're five. So if you're in a position where you're like, oh my god, security is huge and there's hacksaws and, you know, how do I, where do I even start to get my arms around this thing? These will be very, very user-friendly. Uh, see also... 
Uh, coding sites. I'm a big proponent of the idea that everyone should know how to code at least a little bit, at least enough to know how to automate stuff and run your software more efficiently, but that's a whole separate rant. Uh, you know, Code Academy, uh, GitHub has some tutorials that you might want to look at. There are, again, vast, deep, wide resources out there to learn how to code. Um, so do those. Uh, SANS runs quarterly capture the flag competitions. Uh, anybody here been in the CTF? I know you have. Come on now. <laughs> Don't look so sheepish about it. So a capture the flag competition for the uninitiated is essentially uh, a hacking competition. B sides runs a lot of them where you're given various sets of challenges. Some of them are in forensics, so you might have a challenge where you're figuring out what happened in the environment. Some of them will use coding skills. Some of them will use social engineering skills. So what I love about CTFs, a lot of things. One, they're usually free. Two, they're really, really friendly ways to shoulder surf with people who know way more than you do say, what are you doing there? Explain that to me. Why, uh, what is this that we're looking at? Oh my god, it's assembly. What the heck is that? Um, and people generally, the attitude, the culture in a CTF environment, generally, I know a lot of people will nag me on this, is um, very friendly and very educational and people generally are very happy to say, well, here's what I'm doing with this, and here is why this is a critical vulnerability, and here is how I'm getting this flag. So any event where you see there's a CTF, I've got a dev buddy, he's a .NET developer, and he's like, uh, why would these guys want me to help them? I'm like, because, hell, there might be... Uh, <laughs> your .NET skills, you don't know. They might be useful. And plus... They're happy to brag. People who are good at things like talking about how and why they're good at them. So again, exploit the egotistical nature of human beings for your own education. Uh, I understand this can be intimidating. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how to overcome shyness and social awkwardness, which I feel is very, very important in career development, especially for geeks like us. So. Um, yeah, absolutely. Basically every C uh, CTF ever. Uh, there are also college cyber defense competitions. Uh, is there, is Lipscomb running one or involved in this at all? Anyone? Yeah. No. Okay. So, uh, whether it is or whether it's not, there is one near you. Uh, Google CCDC plus name of your favorite college or college near you. This is specifically for college students. Um, there are ways to be involved if you're not a college student, but yeah, uh, definitely check those out. And uh, ctf365.com, again, uh, it is a remote, worldwide CTF environment, so go look at it. There are ways to get involved, for sure, and uh, kind of get your feet wet in terms of competitive hacking. So I mentioned labs. Uh, who here has a lab? Um, it's, if you are coming from a technical background at all, have an applicable lab and use it. You definitely want uh, to be using virtual machines within your lab that did not fall off the back of a truck. And I do not, under any circumstances, condone stealing a VM from work. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> There are many, many resources out there for how to build a functional, working, contained, legal home lab. It can get expensive, but you can start with as little as one virtual machine on your computer. Um, if you want more information about how to build a lab, that's, again, a whole other talk. Come see me afterwards. I have some resources you can use. but. Essentially, when I'm talking to people that I want to hire, and I'm really impressed by them and really interested in what they've done, they tend to talk a lot about their lab work. And the reason this is important is that when somebody is doing 
ethical hacking, research, learning code at home on their own time, I know they're legit. I know that they are not necessarily, you know, I heard there's money in security, or I want to be elite hacksaw because I saw a movie once and there was a cute girl in it. It's, I, I know that the interest is sincere, and I know that even if you're not a technical god or goddess, you're trying to improve, and you're actively working on those skills on your own time. Same as taking classes. I mean, if you walk up to me and say, I have an IA degree, or I want to be a hacker, or I have a CEH, I'm going to say, great, what have you ever done? And if you have zero experience, if you have, if you're coming out of a job where you're a real estate agent and you woke up one morning and you decide you want to be an ethical hacker or work in security, or if you're a desktop monkey and you're like, God, I'd really like to get into this stuff, there are free, not easy, but free, simple things you can do on your own time to get into it. So uh, again, intentionally vulnerable sites, check those out in your lab, do some of your training in your lab. Again, if you want more detail on how to go about this, come see me afterwards. Oh, that's, that's the wrong slide. Yeah. I told you, there would be bad humor. All right, so let's talk about certifications. Um, do we have any CISSPs in the room? Yeah, yeah, uh, cool. So you're just here for the CPE credits, right? Aw, <laughs> oh, yeah. So good. Um, we, again, I never want to be the person who's bashing certs because there's so much cert bashing that goes on. And, you know, there have been some, some issues and some wailing and gnashing of teeth with the council. And, yes, certs are overrated. Vastly overrated. You know what else is overrated, in my opinion? The Beatles. The Beatles are, okay, all right, all right, but the Beatles are still very good. The Beatles are still a phenomenal band, very impactful, but, well, you know, whatever. <laughs> Certs are completely overrated, but the value of a certification is what you do with it, just like anything educational. So, again, you walk in front of me and say, I got a CEH, give me a job now, I'm going to go, <laughs> same deal with any certification. But if you say to me, hey, particularly, I'm going to actually give this props, I did an OSCP, which is this rather difficult certification process that requires you to do, you know, pivot and escalate within basically a pen testing environment. I'll say, all right, what did you learn from that? What was your approach? How did you actually do it? A lot of Red Bull. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and bye-bye uh, social life. Um, again, uh, there I'll comment a little bit on a couple of certs, but essentially what I'd like to emphasize is that I'm not interested in what you got. I'm not interested in tests you passed. I'm interested in what you've done, what you've learned. And even, again, even if that's minimal, you say to me, I found this vulnerability and I exploited it and I kind of didn't do it right and I kind of messed it up and I kind of ended up getting kicked out, but here's what I found, here's what I did. That right there, I consider the beginning of a job interview. That is the start of my taking an interest in you. Even if you sucked, even if you failed, if you're doing something active, that shows me how you think, that shows me what your interests are, that shows me how you work. And that is like, again, we're starting to whiteboard. I'm seeing your thought processes. I'm considering you a candidate for a job, even if you fail. So, um, again, much wailing and gnashing of teeth about the CISSP. There are instances where it's kind of a silver bullet, particularly fed jobs, where <laughs> lots of throat clearing. <clears throat> yeah. Um, DISA at one point became convinced that it was necessary for every uh, federal employee who 
uh, touched any network at all to have a CISSB. It's weird. But you must have a government job. Go get one. Don't spend all your time racking up letters for being functionally useless. It's really simple. Um, I'll comment briefly. People do say to me, oh, on the job description it says cert required or bachelor's degree required. Take all job descriptions with a grain of salt. As somebody who writes them, it's almost like uh, when you're deciding what type of mate you'd like. Like, oh yeah, I'd like a you know supermodel with a PhD who is you know fabulously wealthy. Of course, we'd all like that. But uh, you know, if you're married or if you're mated, or is that does that describe your significant other? Probably not. Do you still love them? Are they still valuable to you? Yes. In the same way, job descriptions are the ideal. Will they hire you if you don't have this cert? Almost certainly. Ask. Say, hey, is this negotiable? Come on now. Uh, again, one of my best pen testers was a former cop. So he did the OSCP, again, kind of hinting it, but um, he did the OSCP. And this was after he had spent many long, tireless, Red Bull-soaked, marriage-affecting hours in his lab, learning stuff, hacking intentionally vulnerable sites. Then he got the cert. I didn't hire him. Uh, he, had, again, had been a cop, had zero IT background whatsoever. Um, I didn't hire him because he had the cert. I hired him because of the skills that enabled him to get the cert and how he absolutely obliterated our lab. Again, the skill set. So good. So much for service. <clears throat> Let's talk about networking. <laughs> that's, um, that's Rance and Johnny Christmas, my former co-presenter, getting thrown out of DerbyCon. No, they, they actually weren't thrown out. They were really nice to them. That was Shmoo. There have been so many <laughs> events where they needed talking to. Um, so networking. Networking is kind of like this salesy, much ballyhooed concept. There's a lot of terrible articles on LinkedIn about it. And, you know, it's not, it's not meeting the CEO of the company where you want to work and taking him out to a steak dinner and kissing butt like that. That's not what networking is. Networking is about getting in front of people, learning from people, and becoming known in a community just like this becoming visible and saying, hey, I'm really interested in secure coding. I'm learning about it. What can you teach me about it? Becoming that person. If I'm Joe Blow and I meet Susie Blue, who shares my interest in secure coding, chances are Susie Blue works at a place that's hiring. And next time they're hiring a secure coder, Susie Blue is going to think of me. That is the basic point of networking. Uh, Again, look around you. Everybody here, if you're employed, is working at a place that's hiring security people. I'm telling you. Or should be. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's another. Well, all right, put it this way. Every organization now, 100% of them have security needs. Whether they realize it or not, whether they budgeted for it or not, another story. But. There is opportunity out there, again, even for somebody who's just learning. I would rather hire somebody who is actively learning than somebody who is passively just like, mm, yup, I'm a god, whatever. So, again, that's the point of networking. Uh, B-Sides is great. Uh, DC local meetups. Even groups that are tangential, like Linux user groups. Uh, if there is a Python group near you, I strongly recommend you get into Python. Again biased, but uh, dev groups, you know, they're all around you. Everybody here, I'm sure, has their favorites, but, um, you know, it's sky's the limit in terms of networking opportunities. <clears throat> but what if I'm shy? What if I'm, what if I'm socially awkward? Um, <laughs> aren't we all, I heard? <laughs> I certainly am. Um, yeah, you know, I'm shy. 
I'm socially awkward, and this is weird because I work with the public, and I often have to cold call and cold approach people. But um, it's like the famous James Spader quote, I overcome my shyness in order to get things done. So there are ways to practice your social skills, which again I want to emphasize are just as important as your technical skills, which I've been blabbering on about. There are ways to practice interacting with people, and there are various benefits to this in security. One, networking, getting close to opportunities, possibly getting a job, learning a lot. But two, security is very social. Doing InfoSec work requires social skills, not just in social engineering, although that's massive. Social engineering, even if you're not on a social engineering engagement, is very, very useful in an IT job. If you can manipulate somebody into doing what you want them to do, you will be much more successful as an IT practitioner and especially as a security practitioner. So let's talk about ways to, uh, to practice this. <clears throat> Remember those annoying spammy recruiters I mentioned? And there's, I know they can be so obnoxious. I used to be one of them. Um, now I'm an annoying non-spammy recruiter. But yeah, use them. Use them as practice. Take these people you don't care about. Take these people who are annoying you and spamming you all day and socially engineer them. Use them as practice for a job that you actually want. So, you know, when, when Bambi from Acme Recruiting Corporation pings you on LinkedIn and she says, hey, I noticed there was a keyword in your resume. My favorite, side note, my favorite is this. I have on my resume that I know how to use PeopleSoft as a recruiter. And I get pinged all the time. Do you want to be an Oracle PeopleSoft developer? I'm like, job I'm grossly unqualified for. Thank you. But use those recruiters and talk to them. This is a way to practice your interviewing skills. Now, inquiring about positions, great. Uh, learning about the job, great, even if you're grossly unqualified for it. Do that. It's unethical to do this under false pretenses. But use this as an opportunity to practice asking questions, to practice meeting strangers, to practice interviewing. It is unethical to, you know, lead them down the path of thinking that you're going to take a job, and it would really annoy me if somebody did that to me. Fortunately, my BS meter is a little more sensitive than that. But, yeah, this is a golden opportunity for you to brush up on those skills. Um, also do this with real interviewers. Also do this with positions you, again, think you might not be that qualified for, or might not be that interested in. I always say never turn down an interview, even if it's not a formalized interview. Even if you're just talking to somebody who's like, again, at a B-side, at a local meetup, hey, I got a gig open. Practice talking to them about that. It's simple, but it's not easy to overcome social awkwardness. Practice. Sorry. I wish there were a better way, or an easier way. But it is the best way. So cool. Um, this is a Johnny slide. Hang on. There's a unified creepiness theory. And it really is true. Um, the, uh, the persistence exponent is really, really honestly the worst part of it. You, you can be creepy to me once, but the persistence is cool. Um, social and soft skills, they're a double-edged sword. If you have good ones, lucky you. Uh, I envy you. Uh, but I, probably nine out of ten candidates for positions that I interview who get turned down it's not because they were technically lacking. It's because their soft skills sucked. Either, a lot of cases, they couldn't write. For the love of all your various gods, learn how to write. And again, if this is something you struggle with, I used to teach college English, come talk to me. I can recommend some resources. Um, but yeah, people get nagged for jobs, mostly because of their soft skills in this industry. Learn to write, learn to talk to people, if it's something you struggle with, practice. Come talk to me later if writing is an issue for you. Um, another 
another Johnny slide. These are some resources that can help you on the more theoretical side of um, of learning to develop your social skills or interpersonal skills. My favorite in security is the prints because <laughs> you really do need to adapt us a a gently Machiavellian attitude. Um, use everybody. This is a business. They're, using people has gotten this negative connotation, but it's okay to use people if they know you're using them. I, that's what I do all day. I manipulate people for fun and profit, and if you're doing security, you are too. If you have a job, you are too. So, you know, you can be very chaotic good about this. You can be, uh, God, two D&D &D references in two hours. Um, so, you know, moral of the story is, um, now, these will help you with, net, all these books will help you with networking, with social engineering, with open source intelligence, and really with understanding human behavior. The biggest threat vectors are behavioral. And this is something that's been repeated time and again. Obviously, yeah, the technology is often lacking. But lack of security is really about people. It's those stupid users. But it's really about decision making, processes. These books, as well as zillions of others, will help you to better understand those. Heck, I mean, I, I'm talking about the value of a degree. I'd almost like to see more security people take psych classes. Or, dare I say it, business classes. Because securing anything is all about decision making from the user on up to the architect, on up to the CEO. So work on this stuff. <clears throat> In conclusion, what I want everybody to take away um, is that while there are no well, there are no silver bullets to getting into security, regardless of your background, you can do it. The TLDR is you have to do the heavy lifting yourself, whether it be education, whether it be networking, whether it be market research, which I touched on very briefly, I'll talk about that in Q&A, um, it's all you. Nobody's going to give you a piece of paper that says, thunk, qualified to do security. It's just not going to happen. We can all improve our skills in various ways. Here are the places where you start. Uh, the need is out there. If you are interested, so much is casually interested in security. You are needed. Now, the skills that you develop, we need those too. You can't just be like, hey, I'm a casual neophyte with a casual interest, walk in and expect to get a job. But we need you. There are hundreds of thousands of critical information security functions going unfilled in the United States today, in the world today. I. Thank goodness I only have to fill all the ones in the United States. You are needed, so please do this work. If it interests you and you're passionate about it, get in the lab and come to work. Thank you. Uh, what kind of time we got? Time? Bye bye. All right, uh, let's do Q&A. I like to provide a lot of time for this. Mr. Street. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, if anybody didn't hear, InfraGuard and local ISSA groups, I, I'm, I would have loved to provide an exhaustive list of resources, but yeah, uh, InfraGuard is one. Uh, Issa, yeah, Issa and Asaka groups a little bit, but you're going to see a lot more suit and tie type people, but that's okay. Social engineer them too. <laughs> yeah. Nash sec. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> All 
All right. Awesome. Where is it located? Cabana. Cool. All right. Uh, so yeah, there are local groups. I gotta say, if you've never been to one before, so they differ. Um, there's an OWASP group in Chicago focused on web app security. Um, that it's super super technical. And if you're comfortable with that, if you're comfortable with going in and talking about directory traversal methods, great, go there, sit, soak it up, even if you don't understand 90% of what's being said. I would venture it's still a valuable use of your time. But then there's other ones where, for instance, Burbsec and also MySec, we sit around and drink beer and talk about our families. And yeah, will people will... What? It is awesome, and it's super social, and it's super unintimidating. And yeah, while we're close knit, and these are you know you'll develop friendships that'll last you the rest of your life. Still, very very welcoming to outsiders. So we see a new face, and we're like, "Hi, how the hell are you? You like security?" <laughs> really, in that tone of voice. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, and it's not that the more religiously technically focused groups are not as welcoming it's just that you know you'll walk in there and it won't be how the hell are you it'll be people hunched over a computer staring at assembly and it may and it may seem more off-putting but again i find that people are delighted to share what they know unless it's illegal so yeah um Again, limitless, an ocean of resources out there, depending. Hey, you may feel more comfortable in a super, super technical group. You may feel like, eh, I'm not quite ready to raise a glass and talk about my family. Or, you know, there's shades of gray in between. So, again, look around you. Every single person here has something they can help you with, and it might be a group like Nash. So, cool. Sir. What is a lab? Uh, a lab is a contained uh, technical environment, usually in your home, often in schools, could be uh, within your office or place of work. Uh, Jason, can you talk about containment and the various levels of that? Right. So the difference between doing something contained and doing something in production where you can actually break something. Clear? Yep. Oh. Mr. Beltface. Yeah, so it's interesting. Um, Jack mentioned Twitter and about how Information security is on Twitter very actively. It's a lot of it's complaining. Um, that is Twitter in general. Complaining and cats. Um, yeah. So um, I hesitate to say yes or no because again, it's all what you do with it. Uh, any social media, the signal to noise ratio is going to be not very good. Rather daunting. However. Um, I hire off Twitter all the time. I, not just, I mean, obviously you have to come interview and you have to demonstrate your actual skills. I'm not just, hey, I love that cat picture. Come work as a pen tester for us. But, uh, so Twitter, I find if you can, God, I hate this word. If you can curate it 
Oh God, that felt gross to say. If you can refine it so that the sources of information you're getting are providing actual value, like they're linking you to CVEs, or they're saying, hey, here's how to set up Arch Linux for your lab, or here's a security job, or here's a funny, stupid thing about PCI, or, you know, topics that are relevant to your interest, yes, it can be very useful. And yes, there are uh, hashtag infosec jobs. Dude, it's uh, an enormous amount of positions that are at varying skill levels. Again, everything from entry level to CISO. Um, again, the need is vast. Most recruiters aren't very smart, but the smart ones are using social media specifically to hire in IT, specifically to hire in security. Areas. It's, you know, it's also a great way to practice that networking almost in kind of a lab environment. If, like me, you're more comfortable interacting on the internet than you are face-to-face, -face, you see somebody tweet about a vulnerability and you're like, hey, I don't know anything about that. Can you point me at a resource where I, where I may be able to learn more? And maybe they'll say, hey, buzz off, noob. But more than likely, they'll say, here's where you learn about it. Bingo, you have a friendship. Bingo, you have a resource that you can use with very little effort. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> For what? <laughs> certainly can be. Yeah. Yeah, certainly can be. I mean, again, um, <laughs> you need... Right? Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, don't tell them you're a woman if you're a woman. Um, it's true. Um, so yeah, I mean, any any media where people are talking about things that interest you, sure, use it. Use everybody. Use everything. But again, if you find yourself in an IRC channel where the majority of it is anatomy humor, and there's a lot of them. <laughs> You know, it, it might not be that great, but then again, it could be a good social engineering opportunity because, let's face it, some of the most godlike, talented people out there really enjoy their anatomy humor. <laughs> so, you know, if you're making friends with them and you're making contacts that way, why not? Use everything. Anyone else? So I could answer this in a couple of ways. Um, I could answer it addressing what I believe to be the most critical lack of security talent. The industries where the lack of security talent is most critical. Finance, healthcare, healthcare again. <laughs> Did anybody see on the landing page of healthcare.gov in the search bar it actually suggests SQL injection to you? <laughs> yep. Uh, so um, anything web facing, so certainly retail, retail, again, credit card information, no bueno. Um, in terms of who's wisest to it, finance tends to rely a little bit too much on hiring for compliance. I find most financial organizations are like, oh, we're PCI compliant, therefore we're secure or whatever. Uh, no. So yes, the need is critical in those verticals. Whether they get it or not is a whole other talk. Where can you get the jobs? Where are the jobs most thick on the ground? Telcos. Yeah, especially if you're in, in an engineering function. Uh, telcos, ISPs, anywhere that's very, very tech focused and downtime means immediate loss of revenue that is super critical. Again, it's all about the business, right? You have to demonstrate the business need. You have to demonstrate how you're adding value, which means 
you're either increasing revenue or more often in security, saving money, preventing them from bleeding out financially. So, you know, you look at where that's most immediately a risk and you're looking at telco service providers, et cetera. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So, um, wave of the future, I think, will be Internet of Things, will be actually securing products like cars, airplanes, toasters, stuff like that. Uh, that's going to be really, really interesting. Like, if I were just starting a security career, I would get very into that. Um, in terms of what's heating up now, software security in general, they're finally getting wise, some of them. Uh, my major client for a long time was a certain telecom whom I will not name except that their logo looks like the Death Star. Um, they were notoriously hacked, not, not hacked, but exploited in a really stupid way by a certain hacker who just got out of jail. And to this day, I, I could tell you stories that would horrify you about their utter and complete lack of and disregard for software security, but they'd hire like 9 million firewall architects instead. So certain industries, again, telcos will hire a zillion firewall engineers, but if you're interested in pen testing or secure coding or actually being a software architect with a focus on security, maybe a cloud architect, good stuff, stay away from those. Go into finance, they got money, healthcare, web-facing, HIPAA issues, PII, uh, dev shops. Startups are great. Um, you know, there's startups everywhere you look. The Bay Area is notorious for them, but I happen to know Nashville has more than a few. Chicago startup scene is rad. They're all over the place. They tend to be, because if you're at a startup, you're probably fairly technically savvy. They tend to be fairly conscious of security, and they tend to know that you need to build it in from day one rather than slap it on like a patch after you've been breached. So. Anyone else? Cool. Well, thank you very much for being here. Again, um, I'm pretty friendly for a shy, socially awkward person. So if you're looking for a gig, uh, I do have positions open in security all over the country. I am a boutique recruiter. I, I am the only recruiter at my company. I staff for various other positions. So. If you're interested in this stuff, come talk to me, and um, yeah, good luck.